All right, hey, g'day. I'm just going to uh, show you what the 6i laser looks like. Uh, it's your common sort of $60 US jobby. Um, hooked up to a DMX controller, and we have eight channels available to us. Um, so basically, the, the, the red lasers on the sides um, are on your left and right. You got a green laser which drives the center one, which has a, um, a like a gobel disc on it. Um, that green one is on the right hand side as well. Um, the blue laser drives the laser on the left. So this is as you see it on the camera, but it's reversed actually because it's <coughs> selfie mode. Um, and uh, the center one as well. So basically, what you've got is a um, is uh, some of them are actually hooked up all together. So let's let's start off and we'll just go through them. So just drop everything down, all the channels down to to zero. So the first channel is a um, uh, essentially a brightness for all three lasers. So when you bring that up, obviously you've got the the brightness there. Uh, and drop it back down again. It's important to note that channels 2, 3 and 4 need to be on to some extent as well. Um, so it's like an override. So for example, if I was... I'm going to keep that channel 1 up full brightness because otherwise it's nothing will work. <laughs> Basically that's a... it's a... it's almost like a blackout in a way. Um, so channel 2, which I've dropped out there, is the red. Channel three, the green, or four, the blue. So if I drop out two, three, and four, so I've got nothing, I can bring channel two in for the red, take that out, come in with three, which is the green, drop that out, come in with four, the blue. So that's how those first four work. The fifth channel is a strobe. So um, at the low numbers, very infrequent. The high numbers, up it goes, much more frequent uh, until it's almost fully on, but not always. So uh, that's what that is. So with the strobe, um, if you have it set to zero, um, it's not active, so it's always on. And then anything more than zero is an to strobe. Um, so that's what that is. So we'll leave that off. <coughs> uh, next channel would be six, and six is basically the position of the stepper motor so um, basically you can um, position the stepper anywhere you want so that's turning that little um, like gobel disc it also rotates the lasers on the left and right hand side as well so what i'm doing here is just moving through it so for example if i wanted to keep that crosshair which is the green one there i could just record that as uh, 43 and then um, program that and set it so I could actually transition from a crosshair to a uh, say a, a round target circle um, and put that in as another scene and that's on I think you know about 100, 108 or so they're going to vary I guess it'd be always different for different units um, the position so yeah you could basically um, alternate between a crosshair and a, uh, and, and a target which would be pretty cool um, you probably want to drop out your red and blue, so we do that. Oh, no, hang on, this red and blue is going to be those ones. Uh, where's the blue? Where's the blue? There you go. So basically, you could go from there, set that, and do that. I should actually probably set that and, and play it, and we'll see what it looks like. I might see if I can come back and do that, but that's what. That would be uh, one scene, and then make that another scene. And of course, when it switches between the scenes, it's going to move the motor a little bit. Um, so there'll be a bit of a transition as the disc moves around. So the other way you could do it is you could actually go, right, I'm gonna um, drop that out, bring in, say, your red, because your red isn't on that disc. And then you can move those around, and then you can come back and you could then have your, your your green come in and I'll find into spots there for example so you could sort of 
fade them out and then bring them back in um, as a transitionary scene to, to do that. So that's it, so let's just bring all those back up again. First four back up, strobe off. So that's the position, uh, so just leave that down the very bottom. Um, and then the, the next channel, which is channel 7. Channel 7 is basically a speed control slash um, rotation. So basically 0 is, is stationary, 1 is rotating uh, a direction, because like the centre one goes like, say, clockwise, and the other two are anti-clockwise. And then if you bring it up to the, the midpoint, uh, the midpoint around you know the 128s or so you can't I can't sit on 128 with this control it's just the slide noise is 127 and 130 so that's basically um, slow around there and then if I keep going up to all the way to 255 I'm full speed back the other way so uh, that's what that one's doing and then um, the very last one is well I'll slowly go through it basically there's a whole there's, you know, green only, blue only, red only, and then as you move up, it starts to move combinations. So this is sort of the automatic type modes, I guess you you have if you ever wanted to do those. Um, and then coming through this speed as you go up with those, and then it will jump into where are we? One fifty-seven, which is. Um, 157, combination, gradually changing speed, it's like fast if you slide up, back the other way, and then, where are we now, we're about 208, which is, um, some other slower combinations there, importantly though, at the very top of it, which is 251 to 255, which is where we are there, we've got that sound control, using this, the, the sound on the microphone on the laser, um, not, the, not the controller. So that's that's where that is. Um, the music's pumping away. It'll pump around and the music's going. Um, and then, yeah, it stops stationing when there's none. So that's it, basically. Um, that's the unit. Uh, but nothing much more to add really. I've only just taken it out of the box and there was no videos on it on YouTube or anything explaining how you, you um, what it looks like I guess uh, when you're changing the knobs. So um, yeah I think the highlight for me was the um, the fact that you can actually um, position the uh, disc um, exactly wherever you want to bring some of these nice um, gobbles in um, as we have it there. So the blue one, if I try to go back to the blue one, because we should probably just have a look at, at the blue, and take out the take out the red. So the blue one, if you can see it, so I know it's a bit hard to see, but there's a target there as well. So I think it, it is the same patterns because it's the same disc. Um, but you know, it looks a little bit obviously the green is a more intense light. If I go and flick ourselves up to green, you, you can see that you've got uh, where is it? The position you've got, um, you know, a little bit more predominant sort of view, of course. Um, and then if we go to the red, as I alluded to earlier which is that one bring that red in all you're doing with that is um, spinning those ones around the side that's essentially all that is um, so yeah there's obviously there's, there's brightness you can you can get that right down you can probably hardly see that if I could make it spin you could so that's Brightness right down on that one, brightness up full, so you can be a bit creative with that too. But yeah, I do like the cross there, I reckon um, that's that's pretty good. Obviously you can't make the red spin, um, or any other colour spin whilst the, the cross there's there, if you want the cross there to be stationary. Um, and 
when you bring your blue in, when that crosshair is there, um, yeah, I don't know if it's quite coincidence, but the actual, the blue light um, is just a, a line. Um, as you come out of the crosshair, the blue starts to turn into a bit of a, like a, like a star. You come back, you get that. So you probably, you know, if you're going to do a program of crosshair, you probably want to try to get it so that the crosshairs, the position is marking exact, and then you take a note of the position to the um, blue is going to give you dots. So I don't know if they all line up. If you look at, uh, yeah, see that one? That transitions there. Um, the other one too I noticed is that you do get a bit of background um, scatter on some of them, like the crosshair particularly. I'm just looking at stuff in the background that the laser is not actually shining on, but there's ambient. So there's a lot of scatter on on that crosshair. Um, so if you did want to have a bit of a, it's not a wash light, but if you know what I mean, you wanted to do that, you can obviously see there's a lot more background light going off in that one. And what there is that so yeah we have a lot of fun with this this is pretty cool um cheap you know, 50 dollar dmx control here in australia and the, and the laser's about 85 dollars seems pretty well made one fan doesn't work on one side and the other fan does i think that's what temperature related it only spins when it needs so i'm not sure they're on different controllers apart from that it seems to work all good happy days check you later